Hello, everybody! Thank you so much for joining me for another Music History Shorts brought to you by the Texas Early Music Project. And today we're going to be talking about the viola da gamba. What is a viola da gamba? Well, let's start with what the viola da gamba is not. First, it is not the name of an Academy Award winning actress. Second, it is not a cello. What? Why not? Despite the fact that they look a little bit similar, I mean, they're both made of wood, they're both sort of a figure eight shape, and they both have strings and you use a bow to play both of them, the viola da gamba and the cello are very different. For example, the cello only has four strings, whereas the bass viola da gamba we're looking at has six, like a classical acoustic guitar. Viola da gambas can have anywhere from five to seven strings. You may also have noticed the slopey shoulders of the viola da gamba as opposed to the cello's more kind of shoulders. The last thing I will mention as a big difference between members of the viola da gamba family and the violin family are how the players hold their bows. Viol players play underhand while violin players play overhand. There are other differences too, but I promise to keep this show down to in three minutes or so, so I have to stop. The viola da gamba is a member of the viol family. The viol is a catch-all term that refers to a bowed string instrument with frets that became really popular during the Renaissance and Baroque periods. The first viol forebearers came to Western Europe via Spain sometime during the mid-15th century, and they probably developed during the Middle Ages from the Arabic stringed instruments, like the rabab. All viols are played between the legs. The term viola da gamba is actually Italian for viol of the leg. Personal note, is that where we get the term gams? Just thinking out loud here. Playing the leg viol as opposed to the arm viol, or we would say viola de braccio, is a big distinction between these families. So who played these viola de gambas? Everybody and their dog played these things. You could hear them in concert halls, but you would just as soon hear them in somebody's house. Viola da gamba was one of the most popular instruments during the Renaissance and Baroque period. Ensembles of gambas were called consorts and if you mixed and matched the other instruments in the ensemble, it was called a broken consort. Those crazy Renaissance folks, their turns of phrases. This was sort of the garage band of its time. Some famous composers you may recognize loved this instrument and wrote for it, including John Dowland, Henry Purcell, William Byrd, Johann Sebastian Bach, Handel, and Vivaldi, and more! The viola da gamba's popularity was eventually eclipsed by its louder little cousins in the violin family. During the latter half of the 18th century, larger concert halls and the development of the symphony during the classical era gave rise to the popularity of the violin, viola, cello, and double bass, and the quieter viol began to fade into the background. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Here's what the viola da gamba sounds like. That's about it for today. As always, you can find out more about the Texas Early Music Project at our website, www.early-music.org. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye. I need to go. Get off my bag. <laughs>